Don't give up. Don't be in despair. Come on, you can run, you can do it. And you dig deep and you just keep on running. I'm here saying keep running. Stay, stay in the race. Don't sit. Don't give up. Don't be in despair. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Psalm 16, he said, in thy presence is fullness of joy. You know what got Jesus through? Look at this. Run this race with patience that is set before us. How do we do it? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and then sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. preached you can preach it that's fine I believe the joy that was set before him was the promise that he said I foresaw the Lord always before my face at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore in thy countenance is fullness of joy you'll hear it preached the only message you'll ever preach out of this passage is that Jesus looked at all of us that are going to be saved and that was enough joy to make him endure the cross and despite no the joy that was set before him was a promise of a resurrection. The joy, he said, I set the Lord. See, the joy set before him, I set the Lord always before my face. God gave him a promise. I will not leave my soul in hell. Thou will not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. He knew in, he said, in thy countenance, in the countenance of the Father, is fullness of joy. There's no more joy that anyone can ever, I'm telling you this, Yes, Jesus may have joy over us getting saved because there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that comes to repentance. But that joy doesn't compare to the joy of the fellowship he has with the Father. You know what got him through? Looking unto the Father. You know what's going to get you through? Looking unto Jesus, the author of picture by faith. That joy, we need to set him as a joy before. He's it. He's the prize. Getting the things that are behind, reaching forth to the things that are before. Reaching forth to that prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You're going to see it through. Do not, I know that the clouds of life don't seem to distort the fact you can't see God. But I'm not supposed to try to look up that way to see Him. I'm supposed to look that way to see Him. Heaven's going to seem brass sometimes. You know what happens when heaven is brass? Keep on praying, friend. I don't have to necessarily reach into heaven. All I've got to do is reach in here. The forerunner who has entered into heaven for me lives in my heart. He is there to intercede to God the Father. When I don't feel like I can get to heaven, he can get through. He's the forerunner. He's already run ahead further than I'll ever be able to run. And he's entered into that which is within the veil. He has sat down at the right hand of the Father and he is there to make intercession for me. The Spirit of God inside of me and the Lord Jesus communicate with each other. They know the mind of each other and they pray with me for groanings which cannot be uttered because he knows the mind of the Spirit which knows the mind of God. What I'm telling you, when you can't seem to look that way, just look to the book. I'm telling you, look to the Word of God. That's where our hope is. When I go to my prayer clause and I begin to pray, you know what I begin to remind myself of? What this tells me. This is what encourages me. The verses. The verses. And I know that God cannot lie. Paul told the Galatian church, here's what he said. He said, you did run well. You did run well. Who done anything? This persuasion coming out of God who called you. You ran well. Who do, I'm telling you, Satan hinders us. Does he not? Satan hinders us. Things in this life seem to get in the way. You know what happens when you got a roadblock? Go around it. Just, just say, oh, that's all right. Get around it. Stay in the race. Keep running. Say, preach, I don't feel like I can make it another day. Oh, just cry out to God. Just stay in the race. Stay in the race. You know what's going to happen? You're going to feel some power from another world. Stay in the race. You know what's going to happen? You're going to feel strength when your strength is gone. God never, ever, ever, ever fails to keep his word. He doesn't. Say, preacher, I've already been praying for a day. Keep on praying. We are. Preacher, I just, I just pray. Five, I, I've, been pray, I've been praying five hours without ceasing. 
pray five days without ceasing. Maybe he'll come through. God, we are. We hate the way. I hate the way. Let me say this. I hate to wait. You know what I can say? You hate to wait. We're all in the same bucket. Shake us up and dump us out. We're all like it. Never let us still do it. You have to lay it on God by faith. I have to wait. The Lord shall, if you wait on the Lord, he'll strengthen thine heart. Paul said in Philippians 2, 16, as we finish, he said, that look, I hadn't run in vain. I don't want to labor in vain. I don't want to run in vain. Don't start this race and give up and don't finish it. Then all your running is in vain. If you don't go across that finish line, Paul tells us, I don't run uncertainly. I'm running to win. And they all run, but one win at the prize. You know what happens in this race? If you'll finish this race, you win. You win. An uncorruptible crown. You win. And Paul said, look, I don't want to run in vain. You know what happens? If you're in this race and you've been running, you let something hinder you and knock you out and discourage you and you quit running, then all your running's for what? It's all in vain. It's been worth it. Finish your race. Finish your race. Paul said, I finished my course. Paul finished his race. He come down to the end and he can rejoice. And it wasn't without heartache and trial and imprisonment and persecution and misunderstandings and everything else but he finished his race thank God the Lord Jesus has showed us a way he's the forerunner he's gone through and so I want you to look at one last verse if you'll look in so many I could give you but look in first Peter chapter 4 verse 4 first Peter chapter 4 I'll end with this Look at verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. The time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatry so it talks about how we walked in those things and then look what it says in verse 4 wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of right speaking evil well some of you ran real hard in the world before you got saved well I mean you were running with the world you were, I mean you gave all your strength to run with this and even when it seemed to all be gone you kept chasing it you kept that you kept after it. The Bible said the world's going to think it's strange we don't run with it anymore because we're running a different race. We're running in a different direction. We're running for a different cause. You're in a race. Stay in the race. Just, just keep running. Can't tell you how many times. I'm here to, I'm here, I'm here to encourage you. Now, how many times playing sports they'd have us run the marathon or the long marathon and you're running and all of a sudden you're going uphill and you just feel like you can't take another step and the guy next to you says, come on, you can do it. Come on, you can run, you can do it. And you dig deep and you just keep on running. I'm here saying, keep running. Stay, stay in the race. Don't sit down. Don't give up. Don't be in despair. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Don't give up. Don't be in despair. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. 